This is a brief video on cyanotic congenital heart defects. We're going to be talking about five cyanotic congenital heart defects. And these heart defects are called cyanotic because they they result in the mixture of deoxygenated blood with oxygenated blood and then pouring of that mixed blood into the systemic circulation. So these congenital heart defects can cause cyanosis in, in newborns, in infants, and even in older patients. And that's why they're called cyanotic congenital heart defects. We're going to be talking about five defects listed across the left there, and they each have a number assigned to them. That number is going to serve as sort of a mnemonic to help you remember these five defects. So let's jump into number one of the cyanotic congenital heart defects and that is truncus arteriosus. This one's labeled with a one because we have one big vessel in the middle of the heart. This big vessel is called the truncus arteriosus, which comes from the heart during the developmental stage. Usually this truncus arteriosus is split with a wall that splits the aortic and the pulmonary arteries. And now this did not happen in people who have this disease, so we call it a persistent truncus arteriosus. And we can see that blood kind of mixes between the two ventricles before going out into the pulmonary circulation and into the systemic circulation. So most patients also have a ventricular septal defect with persistent truncus arteriosus. And we can kind of see that in the picture there too. The ventricles don't really have much of a septum between them, allowing for even more mixture of blood as it's pumped into the aorta and the pulmonary artery. This is persistent truncus arteriosus. We see mixed blood going into both sides of the circulation, both the systemic and the pulmonary circulation. Next one, we have two, which is transposition of the great arteries. This one's called two because we have two great arteries and they're both switched. Now, the great arteries are the aorta and the pulmonary artery. These are usually attached to the the aorta is usually attached to the left ventricle. The pulmonary artery is usually attached to the right ventricle. In this case, they're switched. And this is a very interesting disease because it results in two separate circulations of blood. The right side of the heart is pumping, is pumping through the systemic circulation. And that's like an isolated system from the left side of the heart, which is pumping through the pulmonary circulation. So in order for somebody with transposition of the great arteries to survive, they need at least one shunt. This could be an atrial septal defect, a ventricular septal defects, or a PDA, a patent ductus arteriosus, which is a connection between the aortic or the aorta and the pulmonary artery. So they need some kind of connection between left and right heart to allow for mixing of the blood to allow for them to survive. In that image that we have on the right there, we see an atrial septal defect that's allowing for the mixing of the blood, turning it purple to pump through the systemic circulation, allowing for the patient to survive. Next, we have three. Three helps us remember tricuspid atresia. There's not much to do with the three here, except for the fact that it has to do with the tricuspid valve, except we don't have a tricuspid valve. Instead of a valve here, we have a wall. Tricuspid atresia is the tricuspid valve being replaced with a solid wall that you cannot get past. So this means that in order for the blood to complete a circuit, you have to have both an atrial septal defect and a ventricular septal defect. Well, it needs to be able to flow into the right atrium from the superior vena cava through to the left atrium through an, a, through an atrial septal defect down into the left ventricle and then back to the right ventricle through a ventricular septal defect. We need both septal defects in order for somebody with a wall replacing the tricuspid valve to survive. This is tricuspid atresia. Four helps us remember tetralogy of Fallot. Tetralogy means four things. We have four odd things going on here. These four, we have them labeled A, B, C, D, and also labeled in that in that right diagram. Uh, and these four are A. First one is pulmonic stenosis. The pulmonic valve is thin. It's hard for blood to get through. We're going to skip over to D because I see it kind of as, as a direct result of A. D is right ventricular hypertrophy. If we're not pumping uh, if we're not easily pumping blood through the pulmonic valve, if we have pulmonic stenosis, A, and we cannot pump blood through it, the right ventricle is going to get much larger as it struggles to pump blood. This is a compensatory mechanism, right ventricular hypertrophy, as a result of pulmonic stenosis. So that explains A and D. Next we have B. B is a overriding aorta, meaning that the aorta, which usually kind of points to 
the left ventricle is pointing into both chambers here. The aorta is taking blood from both the left and the right ventricle. Normally it just takes blood from the left ventricle and kind of going along the same lines as the overriding aorta is C, which is a ventricular septal defect, which essentially kind of connects the two ventricles. We don't have much of a septum between the left and the right ventricle, which allows the blood to mix in between the ventricles and go mostly into that overriding aorta. So these four qualities contribute to the tetralogy of Fallot. And lastly, five letters in total anomalous pulmonary venous connection. Total anomalous pulmonary venous connection. Five words, five letters in the abbreviation. This is an interesting disorder because both veins, both large veins, the pulmonary vein and the superior and inferior vena cavas both dump into the right atria. So we have mixing of blood right there, right before it gets into the heart in the right atria. Now, in order for a patient to survive with this, it's, uh, it needs to be associated with an atrial septal defect to allow that, that mixed blood in the right atria to go into the left atria and then go through the systemic circulation that way. We sometimes also see a patent ductus arteriosus. Again, that's a connection between the aorta and the pulmonary artery, and that can help with the mixing of blood and the connection between the left and right circulations here as well. This is total anomalous pulmonary venous connection. That's it for this video. I hope it was helpful, and thank you for listening.